Hello, everyone. Michelangelo Badio here. Shall we? Robert. Robert is especially angry today, and for good reason. Um, as you know, I like to talk, so does Joey. Uh, Robert likes to rip, but um, what we're doing today is I have picked four songs, four tracks out of my 10 song jam tracks that, by the way, is available on Metal Method. Um, uh, um, sorry, Adam, I'm not seeing the, the live stream here. We're live. What's that? We're live. Okay, great. All right. Um, yeah, if I could get the screen. Um, anyway... Uh, I'm going to play four songs. Hey, Parnell, how are you? I'm going to play four songs from these jam tracks. Now, the jam tracks are available at Metal Method. And what we did is uh, I worked on this along with Stuart Bull from the company Lick Library in England, that huge company. And these jam tracks are really cool. They're two-part tracks, about five minutes long. You've heard me play some of them. Track one and track eight are the two most popular ones. I'm not doing those today. They're already online. But uh, let me say this, and then I'm going to shut up and play. Uh, I want to say hello to some uh, of my friends out there. Uh, there's James, uh, Denny, uh, let's see, Alexis, Tanya. Uh, I, I always write it down just to make sure. Brett, Nick, uh, Roxana, Sasha, uh, Clint, I'm seeing Gage. Uh, hey, Nick. Yeah, Nick is a, a really good friend. We've known each other a long time. I see him online now. Uh, hey, Frank. Um, anyway, what I'm playing is... Uh, one of the signature models that I came up with in conjunction with Sawtooth. Uh, believe it or not, I work on a lot on all these guitars with Joe Fuco, who is one of the main owners. It's him and Kevin uh, and one of the other owners. Those are the two that I primarily work with. But Joe and I are the ones that come up with all the signature models. And the great thing is Joe is a drummer. But he's such a visionary, and it, it reminds me of, like, Marshall amplification. For example, Jim Marshall was a drummer, so he comes up with Marshall amps. Uh, Leo Fender and and, uh, and Dale, one of his right-hand men, Dale didn't even play guitar. And sometimes you need these people. My dad used to say, some people can't see the forest through the trees. In other words, sometimes when people aren't as close to the instrument— they can take a, take a step back and look and see things that a lot of us just do not see. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, somebody's writing this crazy thing. Patty something. Gimpet, are you going to do a collaboration? I'll tell you what, I Googled that person. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I don't know who that is. It's like, uh, let's... Uh, you know, let's look at the new Garland Propolizer. Well, what is that? Google it. Well, I Googled it, and it ain't nothing. And so, but anyway, uh, uh, Anita, there's a, I don't even know who that person is. I'm, I apologize. I don't know a lot of people, uh, but evidently they know me. So anyway, but I'm going to play these four songs, and uh, they're really cool tracks. And uh, they're a little different than what you've heard. You've never heard me play these live before. I wanted to pick four that... Uh, that I hadn't played, but let me, and I'm going to play it on the ET hybrid. And the reason I was talking about Joe uh, from Sawtooth is that we just come up with things. You know, we brainstorm uh, in, in uh, some circles. It's called the Mastermind Alliance, where you have people around you that, that you know, highly intelligent, that are like-minded, have, have similar goals, same goals. And, and, you know, we work for the common good. And that's kind of the way I've always been. You know, I've aligned myself with people like that in my career. And uh, when Joe and I were looking at doing something like a, uh, a hybrid, you know, the first thing we thought, is it possible? And we pulled it off. No company has been able to do this. And I love this guitar. This is the E.T. Now, let me explain it, and then I'm going to jam. I've got, like I said, I've got four songs. They're five minutes apiece. Once I get over this initial talking, it's going to be riffing out. Joey wants to riff! I want to show the world that I am the star! Me, me, I, I, narcissism, narcissism, I, I, me, me. Who do you want to see? Joey. I had to even change his spelling. See, he didn't like Joey, J-O-E-Y. So he goes, no, I'm Joey, yo. 
And so I was like, okay, dude. So I've got a wrapper on my left hand. And here, this is the hand version of the Incredible Hulk. Why? Because he's angry all the time. And so we are going to show. Now, what I did with this guitar is I'm going to put on a clean sound. This is a true single coil. It's the, we call it a lipstick pickup. It's the Tele lipstick pickup. You know, and what you do, um, single coil pickups are inherently much softer. So here's what we have on this guitar. It's so easy to use this hybrid. And I'm going to say this uh, unequivocally. I use these hybrids so much when I do sessions. I am constantly working on sessions for people, for companies. I do everything from 13.1 stuff for, for Sony uh, to different bands. I mean, I work with a lot of great artists and I'm doing all these recordings and all these videos and I'm using the hybrids a lot because there are so many nuances to the sounds. Now with this configuration, you can get 16 different sounds, but you have this lipstick pickup and see right here, I'm going to explain it, then I'll show you how I, what I'm going to play. This toggle switch, this is single coil, front and back. So you have middle position. So you get the real twang of the bridge position, the, the nice, clean, bright with the of the lipstick pickup. And the idea is this, this is the true sound. Now what we did is we did a slight compromise by putting the humbuckers in the center. In other words, if it was just humbuckers, the pickups would be here. But to accommodate a true hybrid guitar, we just moved them inwards. Now watch. So you have this as single coil. When you put it in the center position, they are both on. Now listen to the difference. See the girth? So this adds this low end. Watch, here's only humbuckers. Like this. So it's got that humbucker meanness, but then what I love to do is I put it in the center position and I put the humbucker on the bridge position and I get the brightness of the lipstick pickup and the single coils. Now here is the thing that you have to do. The reason why this is a true hybrid is because the single coil pickups and the humbuckers, we've left the integrity of the volume and the way the pickups are. Single coils are much softer normally than humbucker pickups. We left it like that. See, we could have raised the level of the volume of the singles and lowered the humbuckers to make them even, but that wouldn't have been a true hybrid. You couldn't AB that against another Tele style or another uh, you know, style with, with multiple humbuckers. So when you have clean sound, I've got a little bit of compression. I just use a compression pedal. And so when you use overdrive, overdrive is its own compression. When you have an overdriven signal on an amp or software, whatever you use, that is naturally compressed. So you don't have to worry about uh, any kind of uh, like compressor or limiting. Well, here's humbucker. And there's the single coil, but you hear how much brighter that is? 
Now people say, well, I don't know about Chip and Dippins, dude. Well, let me tell you this. I've done a lot of albums. I've worked with a lot of big people, Grammy Award winning producers. When you are in the studio, these little nuances, you know, they say, you know, the devil's in the details, bro. Details make a movie. Details make a song. Uh, you know, when you hear the Beatles and, and John Lennon's going, it's only love and that is all. The way he sings or McCartney, whoa, darling. And he's just riffing, you know, like, like John, not riffing. He's just like just singing his guts out. Or even when I sang her, you know, what have I become? You know, I just nailed it. You know, not that I'm a singer like McCartney or Lennon. But what I did was I put as much emotion into it, as much feel as I could, and I nailed the note. Um, and it was the nuances like, my sweetest friend. You know, I, a lot of times the way people enunciate words just turns people on or off. Like when you hear Def Leppard, what do you want? What do you want? I want rock and roll. You know, they have the... Uh, it's the, the inflections of their voice. And, and that is the way they say the words. Or like when you hear old Beatles music, you know, um, you know they, instead of saw, they said sometimes saw her standing there or wash the car. And so these nuances are so apparent in the studio with a guitar like this. It's just so detailed in the sound. And the... Okay, now, I am going to play. It is no time to shut up and riff. Joey wants to play. Now, these are my string dampers. Uh, what this does, listen to this. It's like a fret rap, only better. I've said this a million times. The only rap I want is around chicken. I want a chicken rap. Put a little lettuce, tomato, mayo, spicy mayo, but that's it. I'm not going to wrap my guitar. And so the great thing about this, Matt Earl, I'm going to tell you something, Matt. After this thing, I'm going to block you. Okay, now let's go. I do know, you know, some people say, um, I don't tolerate stuff here, <laughs> so I'm sorry, guys. You know, I think that it's a uh, a privilege to see and get artists that, that bear their soul to you. If some people don't get it, I could care less. It doesn't change me at all. Okay, so now. Okay. Now, let's do the jam. Are we ready, Adam? Ready. Yep, let's, let's rock it.
Thank you. <laughs> uh, yes, that was really fun. Now, um, what I wanted to illustrate on this is the difference. Uh, first of all, that was uh, mostly a Mixolydian mode in the first part. And then the second part, I just labeled it metal. <laughs> So you could do a lot of things, you know, you could play pentatonics, you could play the blues scale, uh, you could play the Phrygian mode, uh, you could play chromatic. I play a lot of chromatic notes. Um, and when I, when I play, like, I'll, I'll use four notes per string a lot, like... I do this all the time. You know, a lot of people say, oh, dude, I shredder, you play like three notes per string, dude. It's because I don't listen. Um, what I do is a, I do a lot of two notes and I do a lot of four and I have threes too. So what I do, uh, uh, somebody said something about McRocklin. Uh, no, uh, we didn't sell, uh, Thomas anything. Um, you know, it's, a. You know, as I did a song with Mick Rocklin. Uh, if you don't know him, he's a great British guitar player, really. You know, he started at a very young age, almost like a child prodigy, uh, with Steve Vai. Uh, he was on TV shows in Britain, and uh, great guy. Uh, we collaborated on a song. It was a really good production, and uh, just one of many, many things that I've worked on in the last couple of years. But, uh, you know, getting back to this guitar, you know, people always, you know, they like to say, too, like, why don't you try this? Why don't you try this? Like, can you really play clean? If you listen, and, and you know, I, I read this stuff, and there's two things I think about it. Uh, one, why can't people just say something nice? Like, Michael, could you, could you, you know, I could you try, you know, or do something nice and play clean? In other words, say it in a nice way. You know, it it's like when you read these sentences sometimes, I think to myself, one, they might not know a lot about my career. When you watch the initial exercises, just on my Starlix video, which also is available on Metal Method, all the exercises are clean. If you watch my recent videos, I do a lot of clean guitar playing. I grew up playing on a clean guitar sound because they didn't have amps with overdrive. So I'm of the age where it's like, dude, overdrive, you gotta get like a fuzz sound. And it sounds like Farts. And I'm like, I heard, I used to hear these songs. I, I hear these. Oh, wow, that's awesome. I love it. I want it. I want it for my sound. This is my tone. I feel this sound. No. It's, they were clean amps. There was no overdrive circuit. And you didn't have distortion. You had fuzz. They didn't call it overdrive. Fuzz. Do you want to really put fuzz on your guitar? Yeah, let's cover my guitar in fuzz, dude. You know, I got this beautiful wood green guitar, but I think it would look better covered in fuzz. Let's fuzz it up, bro. Yes, it's a good idea. I like it. It's got a very unique sound. I'm starting to feel like... No! David Gilmore! There's so much feel. There's so much feel in that note. I can feel it. So the point is this. Am I going off on a tangent? Yes, because I'm having a good time. I just think it's funny. And see, this is something where like I said, you know, I talk about common sometimes more than people. Uh, other artists do, maybe. But, you know, a lot of artists fight back. Like, you know, they'll say something back. Like, if Joe, if you hit Joe Bonamassa, he's going to hit back at you. Or Andy James, he's not afraid to tell you right back. I don't, I don't think like that. I actually don't want to debate that. I really don't want to. I don't want. It's a race I don't want to run. So I just don't run it. If you come to my page... I don't care if you say something like that. I'm like, I'm not going to answer. I'm not going to deal with it because I think this, you know, I, I've had this long career and I've been able to use 
what I've learned over the years and the culmination of it are guitars like this. They work. They work great. And now, now I have been beating the heck out of this guitar. I have shown the guitar no mercy. They never show mercy. And so, but listen. It's perfectly in tune. I mean, I have really beat this guitar up. Now, I also know that, you know, Floyd Roses are not always for everybody. But let me tell you something about a Floyd Rose. I have used, I know Gary Kaler. I've used Kaler systems. We use Wilkinson Trems now a lot. I know Trevor Wilkinson, the, the original designer. I don't even know if he owns the company still. Uh, but Floyd Rose works. If you want locking trem, this is the best. Now, I know Ibanez makes an edge. It's a really good trem, but it's 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 a really a ripoff of a of a Floyd Rose. You know, they did a few modifications, but is it original? No. They just the the technology is a Floyd Rose. Another company doing a similar version is just doing is using technology that works. It's like once the car was invented, you can have another company make a car. The car works. So it doesn't matter if XYZ makes it or ABC makes it. Pretty much we know if it's a car, dude, you got to put gas in it. Unless it's electric, then you got to put electricity in it. And so, but it works. And so it's the same thing with this. The technology of a Floyd Rose is so sound and it stood the test of time. I love Floyd's. There's a reason why Steve Vai, John Petrucci, myself, Joe Satriani use Floyd's. It's not just the fact that they're so stable, but there's a certain tonality that they get that just tightens up notes. But I also know that not everybody likes them, but I've actually had people criticize Floyd's, uh, like right on my page, and I thought, what don't you know about them? I've been using these for 30 years. I know these inside and out, even the Floyd FRX. What are you going to tell me about this? Have you done thousands of shows with a thousand different guitars, playing guitar clinics, and having to set up a guitar you've never played with a Floyd Rose and having to play it and be filmed and put online? Have you done that? And, and the answer for 99.99% of the people is no. So... I'm not going to listen to that. I'm sorry, but it's like a it's like a t Tom Brady getting advice from from somebody who watched all Tom Brady's games. Yeah, you might pick up something here here and there about it, but what are you going to tell Tom Brady? Because he would think the same thing. Have you been in a game? Have you won a Super Bowl? And I'm not acquitting myself with this, but that's why I'm telling you in my honest the most honest way that I can and truthful way that I can, my idea of guitar. I'm not saying to play like Mikey. I'm saying these are the things that I've learned throughout a long career. Now let's play this next song was actually a riff that Jim Gillette and I came up with in Nitro. It was just a demo uh, for our second album, the very first part of it. Uh, we had a funny name for it, which I'm not going to say because we never use it, but um, I can just say this, it's a really fun song to play, and let's do it. Another five-minute, two-part riffing song.
Yes. That was fun. I got off on a tangent there. I was like playing some really outside. Like... So, uh, yeah, it was funny. Um, let's see. Uh, what was I going? Oh, I saw. Okay. Oh, some people. I'm just reading some of the questions here. I don't want to uh, just get off on tangents, but I have to admit, I like getting off on tangents. So, um, and I have a good time. Uh, you know, people know me. And I think you do by now. You know, no one knew I had this, you know, wild uh, comedic side. I, you know, Robin Williams is one of my all-time favorite comedians. I also like Rodney Dangerfield a lot and Sam Kennison. And, you know, uh, some of the things they say, you know, said back then, you can't even say today. But I just love their delivery. And especially somebody like Robin Williams, who was just so spontaneous. And, you know, when I was talking to you uh, a little bit before, uh, somebody can demonstrate the dual delay. Um, that That is good. Uh, that's a good idea. Um, I can talk about my delay setting. I have a signature overdrive uh, that I'm using and a signature delay. And I set... Um, I set it up... It's about 340 milliseconds. And uh, so that's what I use. And I use that, that uh, I use it about 320 to 340. Now, a lot of times in music, especially with DOS systems, when you have a BPM, you know, the beats per minute, and you can say, okay, I'm doing a song at 180 BPM or 127 or 200, whatever you use. You can also set your delay to, to um, by the timing of the BPM, I think for myself, that's too clinical. So I never really listen to the tempo of a song. I use this 320 to 340 millisecond couple repeats. Like you don't hear it that much. Uh, somebody asked if my amp is solid state or tube. Uh, it's two. And uh, it's a sawtooth 40 watt tube amp. They sound amazing. And then I just use a little bit of compression for the clean sound. I don't really use a lot of effects. I mean, I have a lot, but I find, unless you're Steve Lukather, more effects equal, you know, the more effects, the smaller the sound, and especially live. I mean, if you're sitting in front of a computer doing playthroughs, that's one thing. Stand in front of a world-class drummer that's going to blow your brains out when he hits a cymbal or she, and uh, you find all those spatial effects become non-existent because you can't hear nothing. And, and uh, so, you know, I have so much experience playing live and I played with so many big time drummers that, that, and they all have one thing in common besides having a great groove. They hit hard. Uh, and even Joe, you know, one, one, the, one of the main owners, like I said, him and Kevin, uh, Sawtooth, when he hits, he's on the, on the Go DPS Music app, which is one of the companies that's affiliated, affiliated with Sawtooth. There's Sawtooth, there's Chromacast Music and Go DPS Music, which was, uh, they had a brick and mortar store. That's how I met everybody. I did an in-store clinic at their store in Southern California. And uh, they are they are the retail side. Uh, and the other two pieces are the wholesale, not wholesale, I'll take that back. Uh, they are the manufacturing side. Mm -hmm. uh, I use the wrong terminology uh, to make it specific. The Chromacast manufactures and sells Sawtooth manufactures and sells, but Godi PS is uh, the retail. They sell. They don't make uh, products where the other two of the three companies do. Um, and But what I've learned over the years for myself, when I have delay, you run it through the effects loop. There's an effects loop here. You can see the cables here, my signature cable by Chromacast. And uh, I have that. I don't have a really big time, like it's not... Uh, so much delay where it clouds the sound, but 320 to 340 milliseconds, it, it's like delete, delete. Now I added a little reverb. The amp has reverb too, so I put a little verb on there too. Now in concert, I probably wouldn't use reverb because you really don't hear it, uh, but delay you do hear, and it makes things real comfortable. So really my main, my three main pedals are my signature overdrive, not fuzz, uh, my digital delay pedal, and then I use a compressor. 
And, and so between that, I get a great clean sound, great overdrive sound, and, and it's a very comfortable sound to play. Like... You know, just got that really cool sound. Now I'm using the humbucker and single coil. Now watch. See, that's humbucker. Now watch when I use single coil. Humbucker. Together. Somebody asked if that was Dream Theater. No, that's my song called Oceans of Time. I like that. I love that. Uh, the I remember, and people have commented about the line in uh, in the movie Dracula with Gary Oldman. When when he was uh, when he came to the United States and he sees Winona Ryder who is Elizabetta and he looks at Elizabetta because she's like the reincarnation of his wife when he was Vlad the Impaler and he goes to her I have crossed oceans of time to see you to find you and I thought what a, what the symbolism oceans of time. I mean, how, you know, the earth is three quarters water. So 75% of this planet is water. And the majority, you know, obviously fresh water, but the majority of it is saltwater oceans and to cross oceans of time. And so, and I, you know, I have so much great music that um, I'm going to be featuring a lot of my big discography uh, on playthroughs, but just this riff alone. Now, I use seven string on it. And so the actual riff, I'm playing it in E, it actually started in B. But I just love it. And there's a part in the middle. I do piano and bass counterpoint. I go like... It's almost like Bach. It's so... I wrote it as a two-part piece for piano and bass guitar, and it's in this song. And, and uh, you know, it's uh, one of the things, too, and I touched upon this last week, and then I'll play the next song. Something that people have to understand, that, you know, we live in a divided planet, you know, whether it's politics or, you know, what's going on, uh, you know, in the world. People think, you know, one is the yes, one is the no, this is the yes, this is the no. But I've also, you know, I didn't realize this until recently. There are so many people that 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 think, you know, and I'm going to use David Gilmore because I have been the poster child of this speed technique versus David Gilmore. Michelangelo Badio, the speed technique. Nation versus David Gilmore, the art of feel. And so this is the thing, you know, it's like people nowadays for decades in rock music and critics too, mostly these dumb critics. You know, critics have been around in every generation of music for century after century. We don't remember the critic that said Mozart played too many notes, do we? No. We remember Mozart. We don't remember the critics that said Kiss was a joke and Led Zeppelin won with Rolling Stone, which I never read that magazine. I don't even get where they're coming from. They said Led Zeppelin can't write songs. Really? Okay. And so, you know, you read this stupid stuff, but here's something that I think it's a very, it's almost, it's like an epiphany that... You know, when I see these people, I'll post an exercise. David Gilmore, he can play more notes with one, one note with more revealing. It's an exercise. I don't care. It's not comfortably numb. No, it's comfortably quick, you idiot. And so what I said was this. 
up until rock and roll, I hate to burst the the David Gilmore fan. I love Pink Floyd and David Gilmore, and I'm sure he could care less like this, but I'm a teacher, and this is the thing that I really, um, it just hit me like, a, like in the head with a brick. Before rock music, it was never feeling versus quickness. They all had it. Mozart was fast with feel. Beethoven was fast with feel. Paganini was fast with feel. The norm was technique and feel. All of a sudden, somehow we got these critics or these pundits got it in their head that if you play fast, you can't write and you have no feel and you have to play slow like David Gilmore. They don't realize that's a 30, 40, 50 year span out of centuries of music that refutes that. That is wrong thinking. It's been wrong for centuries. Uh, and I studied this in music, but it never became more clear until I read all this stuff online where people actually made the distinction that, oh, this, uh, yeah, that, 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 fast. That, that, well, I like that. Well, why not? Mozart played fast. You know, Shostakovich played fast. Rachmaninoff, try playing some of his stuff. And, and so, you know, and so, and you know, how about uh, Aaron Copeland? And, and so the list goes on and on. But this is something that, and this is one of the reasons I think why my instructional programs still do so incredibly well. I don't focus on the stupid stuff. If you want to learn how to play fast, I show it like the classical masters. It worked for Bach and Beethoven and Mozart. It works. It, it stood the test of time. And the reason I'm saying this is not to complain. I'm not com complaining to anybody. But if you understand this and if you learn something, my biggest thrill in life was when Tom Morello told one of them uh, in music was when he said it was a musical epiphany taking lessons from me. He talked about me on Howard Stern's show. And it's not that I've never said I was the fastest around this or around that. I just tried to be the best I could. And I based it around knowledge of centuries of study. I'm not saying I'm a vampire. I could be. But uh, that that I learned from the past and how they did it. That's what my degree was about. It was music theory, composition, how these people thought. I took a class on Beethoven. Just I loved the, the mind of Beethoven. You know, thousands of people showed up at his funeral because you know, and you know, and he he was such a, a, a such a powerful figure in his life. Where you and Sebastian Bach was unknown in his life. It was a hundred years later, a century later, that his music has been rediscovered. Can you imagine if we never heard "Yesterday" by the Beatles or 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 Blackbird or or Help, and and a century later we discovered this amazing band that that was you know not only. You know, it was Beethoven's look, too. And this is something that you can't discount. That Paganini had a look. Now, I'm not saying that it's more important than the music, but Beethoven's wild hair, he had an image that made him striking. You know, uh, and it's another thing, too. You know, sometimes, you know, if you, you know, well, you know, Steve Perry should look like this, or Joe, or I should look like this, or, you know, oh, rockers should dress their age. Well, my age, you know, when some somebody made a really harsh criticism about Uli John Roth, I showed a picture of me, Dave Mustaine, Uli, and the former owner of Dean that passed away. And they said, oh, he's like this old man trying to dress like a kid. What kid dresses like they were at Woodstock? You tell me! What kid dresses like that? It's so wrong thinking. I didn't comment on it, but I read this stuff go, really? Are you that stupid or are you that uninformed? But I won't comment on it. But in my brain, I said, this is just not the way. It, this isn't the world of music. The world of music is you play the best that you can. Ingve projects Ingve Malmsteen an image. He's got this image. He comes out with the Marshall stacks. I project an image. I had such an image that I could do a silhouette of me with a double guitar, and people knew who it was if they knew about guitar. Steve Vai constantly changes his image. He's like a pop star, and I think that, that works really well for him. But there's all these things that, that are involved in just playing guitar and being a professional guitar player. And the thing that I, I really hope, I keep an open mind. I, I don't discount anything and, until unless my education has said, well, this just ain't it. You know, I've traveled 
for almost 30 years all over this planet. Okay, so I've seen China 15 times. I've been in Russia four times. I read this thing on Blackie Lawless today. He might he said Russia was his biggest territory, and he probably will never go back there. And it's a shame, you know. Russia's a beautiful, beautiful country, and um, you know I'm not a politician, or you know I don't preach religion or politics. I just like to travel, and I like to meet people. And uh, you know when I work on these guitars, or work with people, or tell you something, I'm telling you from the heart. I'm telling you based on my experience, because if I'm wrong, I'll admit it. I, I will admit it. Uh, but if, if you come to my page and just spout off stupid things, uh, I'm not here to debate that. Um, you can go to another website and say, well, Michelangelo Badio is this and this and this. I, can, I don't care. But, you know, I don't like to argue. I don't argue with my family. I don't argue with my friends. I don't want to argue with you. Uh, you know, if I don't believe something, I just don't talk about it. And I won't answer you. Uh, you know, I don't want to start arguments. I don't like that. I'm not a confrontational person. Now, let's play another song. Um, this one, I kind of, I called it Gimme Jimmy. And uh, we are having a sale at Metal Method, too. Uh, my No Boundary song that I wrote for Speed Kills is on sale for the uh, 25% off. And also, too, with this guitar, if you go to the Go DPS Music app, you can see, you can get this uh, guitar 20% off. Okay, are we ready?
All right, let's just do the last track, No More Talk. Are we ready? This one uh, used to be a song that I wrote called Off and Running, and we used this as a jam track. Are we ready? Yep. Let's do it!
Fuzz! Thank you. I'm Michelangelo Badio for Sawtooth Guitars, Chromacast Music Products, Go DPS.